Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exult over us. Redeem us, O God of Israel, from all our distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins as we ask for the Lord's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moria. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger came to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket, so he went, took the ram and offered it as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I, I will walk before, before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord 
in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud the, vo the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, listen to him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they saw no longer anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in the Lord, when we arrived at its base, it proved to be a mountain far larger than I ever imagined. And of all the sites that my classmates and I visited during this trip to the Holy Land, it, among all others, taught us by the very journey we were about to take up the mountain, taught us the meaning of the place we were to visit. And of course, I am speaking of the mountain of the Transfiguration. For you can imagine, as pilgrims, we were on this coach bus, the typical bus you do go on, air-conditioned, comfortable, and we began the ascent. But to my surprise, soon after we began, the bus pulled aside into this plaza, and we were told to exit, far away from the top of the mountain. And. To my surprise again, a much smaller, simpler, without air conditioning, older version of a bus appeared to take us the next leg up. For as it was explained to us, the road narrowed to the point where a modern bus could not go. And we continued the ascent higher, hotter, more uncomfortable until we reached nearly the top, when we went to a second plaza, where the smaller, more archaic bus dropped us off, and we needed to walk the rest of the way. Not an insignificant walk. So you can well imagine, when we got to the Basilica of the Transfiguration, hot, tired, a bit annoyed, 
walking into the basilica and to be to encounter the beauty the dazzling white and glorious colors of the basilica that was warm safe inviting it was a glimpse in parable of what the apostles themselves experienced on the day of the miracle we hear today in the Gospel of Mark. For you see, my friends, it was arduous in a sense to climb the mountain the way I described, but imagine walking it by foot. And that arduous task of the mountain was almost for the apostles a parable of life following the Lord. He who walked with them every step of the way. It is not easy. It demands suffering. It demands losing our comfort. It demands being singular in mission. To do what? To reach the pinnacle where on this day, on that mountain, the Lord allowed them to glimpse their destination, to glimpse his glory, his power, his majesty as God. And they were terrified in the true sense, they were overwhelmed at what was there, having had the perseverance to suffer up the mountain. Now why is that important? Because in the early church, when they looked at this miracle, the fathers often talked about the journey up two mountains. For this was to encourage the apostles to come up the second mount that they would do as they continue their road to Jerusalem, a road they knew would be fraught with many challenges. They had already heard the whisperings of the crowd that wanted to act against Jesus. And of course, the second mount they were invited to walk up was Mount Calvary, a mountain where they would not initially glimpse the glory. They would only glimpse the suffering. One was an encouragement to have the courage to walk the second. And you and I know all but one did not. And we, in our journey of discipleship, are given the same choice many times each day. For allow me to be frank, at the heart of Christian discipleship is in fact a dying to self, similar to that parable of going up the Mount of the Transfiguration. It's literally shedding the larger bus, the smaller bus, it's literally shedding all the comforts. It's shedding everything that is around us that we take for granted. It is a stripping away as we climb the mountain with Jesus. For what? So that we might find the glory that is the product of a life lived in love. Self-sacrifice. Where we value others, treat others, care for others, serve others. First, to will their good first and find our value and good in that love. And those who do that will discover two great truths. That while it is not easy, the Lord is with us every step of the way. And at the end of our journey, we will have glory. That which Christ has he will give to us. There are many times in my life, my friends, that I have not chosen to walk the mountain. Those are my days of sin. Perhaps the same is true for you. That we have failed to walk this mountain of discipleship with Jesus because we were afraid of the cost or how much it would suffer, how much it would in the end demand of us. But that is why the church gives us this parable to meditate here as we continue our journey towards Jerusalem this Lent. 
For it is not meant to discourage us, but to encourage us, to give strength to our hearts and to our hands, that we may take the next step up the mountain. For if we do, and we walk the mount that leads to Calvary this Good Friday, my friends, as I also discovered in the Holy Land, in the, the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre, that when those who have the courage to walk up Mount Calvary from its vantage point in the distance, one can see the empty tomb from which the glory of Christ will shine for all eternity. So my friends, we have a mountain to climb. Are we willing to take the next step? As always, we profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We place our needs before the Lord Jesus. Let us pray for our Holy Father Francis, particularly as he prepares for his apostolic trip to Iraq, that he may be kept safe and continue to lead the church with courage and wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace throughout the world, particularly in those parts of the world that are ravaged by war. Let us also pray for peace in our cities and communities, peace in our families, and peace in your heart and mine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for perseverance and courage to continue the discipleship, the journey of discipleship you and I are asked to follow in the footsteps of the Lord, to climb the mountain that he has before us and be able in fidelity to trust in his love and his promise that one day our love will lead to the glory of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those who suffer, particularly our neighbors and friends who continue to fall ill from the coronavirus. Let us pray that they will be healed and the doctors and nurses and all who care for them will be protected and kept safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us take a few moments to remember the dead as we ask the Lord for his mercy. May they rest in the Lord's peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Help us with the grace of your Holy Spirit to be encouraged to continue to walk discipleship forward and lead us one day to the glory of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of all my sins. My dear friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, name for our good, good and good of all of his holy church. church. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. So with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who, who comes, comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, all the bishops, and your entire people. For just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine wisdom, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe unto eternal life.
This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still here on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, thank you for joining me for the celebration of Holy Mass. And I would like to invite you in a very special way as we prepare for the consecration of the diocese to St. Joseph on the feast of St. Joseph, husband of Mary, which is the 19th of March. In anticipation of that special celebration, we are going to be offering a, ne a novena of preparation from March 10th to March 18th. It will be held at seven o'clock. And you can find your way to the novena through our diocesan website. It will be an opportunity for us to honor this remarkable man of faith to whom was entrusted the Holy Family as we entrust this period of preparation, what I call time in the upper room. And as we continue to plan for, please God will be a great missionary outreach to the larger world. So I invite you strongly to make every effort to be part of that novena every evening at seven o'clock and then next week I'll have more information about the Mass of Consecration, which will be held on the 19th. We bow our heads to the Lord. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. Keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Together we pray, St. Michael the Archangel, Amen. defend Amen. us in battle. Be our Amen. protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do Amen. thou, O Prince Amen. of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.